support for our region. So these workshops are offered for you free of charge um, to help better the education and meet the needs of our students. So we're glad you're here and um, there's no hidden fees or anything. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is just introduce ourselves to one another because we all are coming from different points and different places. And my name is Kelly Ficklin. I coordinate the elementary ed program here. So I do the overview and then you'll have different people that will come in and do the other sessions as well. Good morning, if you could please sign in and put the agenda right there. Thank you. Um, this is my 33rd year of teaching, my eighth year here at the university. So I just finished my doctorate degree in December. So um, I love teaching. I taught in public school for 24 years before I came here. So um, I think it's an honor to be able to teach people to be teachers. So that's what I'm all about. So um, we'll start with you. Um, Mary Hunt. And tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you are in your life of teaching. Oh, um, I still have another. Well, I have this semester, next semester, and then I can student teach, hopefully. Fingers crossed I get everything done by then. Um, I'm hoping to teach third and fourth graders. I taught the patient's history. I'm Kathy Brown, and I'm a, I'm classified as a senior, but I, too, have um, two more semesters. This semester, next semester, student teaching. Um, I'm from the Moore County, Hope County line, but literally. <laughs> And I hope to teach in Moore County, and I'm not really set on a date yet. And my reading, I'm a reading concentration. Uh, my name is Christy, and uh, I am working on my second graduate degree in curriculum and instruction with a STEAM and special education concentration. And right now, I just volunteer on Fort Bragg. Um, I'm Amanda, and I'm a junior. And my concentration is reading, and I want to teach kindergarten. Uh, my name's Jordan. I'm a junior. I'll student teach next spring. I'm a reading concentration, and I want to teach second grade. I'm Heather, <laughs> and I'm currently certified 9 through 12 English. But I'm adding, I want to add K-6 K because I teach kindergarten right now at Freedom Christian in Fayetteville. <coughs> my name is Tracy. Um, I have my master's in elementary ed and special ed, but I'm licensed in Virginia. So I need to get licensed in North Carolina too. And I teach for Cumberland County fifth grade. My name is Deanna. I'm a letter entry student in Bladen County. And I'm just here because I still have to take that Pearson's too. Um, I'm Tara, um, lateral entry into special education in Hope County, um, and I'm here as well if I need to. I'm Natasha. I just finished um, my master's in elementary education and going on to get my license, so I need to brush up on the test. Okay. I'm Amanda Rodriguez. Um, I'm a third grade teacher in and I need to take this test also. Where are you? From Honeycutt Elementary. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Kenya. I teach a K to two autistic classroom at Honeycutt Elementary as well. Um, my name is Evangeline Cottingham. I'm from Cumberland County Schools. I teach first grade at Lillian Black Elementary School in Spring Lake, and I'm here also so I can pass the test. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> Sheila Martin, I teach at uh, Ramsey Street Alternative School in uh, uh, Fayetteville, Cumberland County. And um, lateral entry, taking the test, <coughs> trying to, well, going to pass the test. Yeah, alternative school for elementary as well? Uh, high school. High school. Okay. Well, you guys, welcome. And like I said, thank you for taking time out of your Saturday to be here. This session today is an overview session. It's going to um, give you some test prep <coughs> skills. It's going to uh, show you the website and all the information you need to learn. It's going to show you some websites where you can go to receive um, practice, where you can go to study for free. And um, you'll receive all of those things. So it's just kind of an overview session. And then we have four other sessions that are come up, coming up, a reading, a math, a science, and a social studies. So just so you know, that's what those four sessions are about, the other four. So all of you have an agenda, so I'm not going to read that to you. But let's start right here. 
What have you heard about the North Carolina Foundations of Reading Test? What have you heard? Turn and talk to a partner for just a minute and tell them what you've heard about this test so far. I've seen like the Alright ladies, if I could have your attention please. What's one thing that you heard? Hard. Hard. <laughs> Hard. It's difficult. Okay, what else? I heard that it was supposed to have been from the praxis. It was supposed to, because a lot of people were not passing the praxis, that it was made to help people looking or wanting to get their license a little bit more easier or more based on no. the academics. Oh, no, not true. Okay. But that's what you heard. So that's yes, cool. that's what I heard. Yes. There's a lot of misconceptions mm -hmm. out there about this test. Okay. What else? You guys? Just like she was it's saying that here. Okay. She was saying that, which I agree. I've heard that a lot of people can't pass the test. Yes. That a lot of people have been this taking test. it. I have one co-worker. He's taking it three times. He's giving up. He's a TA. He said we get it. Right. Right. Anybody else? What'd you hear? That's what I heard. Like, it's you're go in expecting to not pass the first time. But if you do what I teach you today, you should pass the first time. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. But you have to take responsibility and do your part. Yeah. Yes. Okay? And that's the whole goal. All right, so here's the deal with this foundations test. Um, the Praxis 2 was designed to test you on what you've learned about teaching. Well, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. The Praxis 2 is designed to find out if you're ready to be a teacher. We don't have that test anymore. And by the way, UNCP scored almost the highest on students, our graduates, on the Praxis too in elementary. Now, I teach elementary, so I can't talk anything about special ed, okay? And some of you guys are special ed. And you know you special ed guys, you have to take the Praxis too also. Uh -huh. So you're required to take this test and the Praxis too. And by the way, our university does offer some Praxis too free sessions. I don't know when they are this semester. I don't know if he's scheduled them yet or not. But please... Um, Take advantage of those as well, okay? All right, so this test is designed, I don't know what it's designed for. This test is designed to, to find out how much content you know. But unfortunately, a great deal of the content that's on this test has nothing to do with teaching elementary school or being a special ed teacher. It's content that you should have learned in high school, but because many of you guys come from the ABCD world where testing runs everything, you didn't have much science and social studies, correct? Right. So because you didn't, you're behind the eight ball. But here's the deal. You can't beat yourselves up because of that, because you weren't taught that to begin with. But you have to realize that, and you've got to study. Okay? That's the difference. So there's a lot of content that you didn't learn. So again, don't beat yourself up about it. The reading test is four hours long. The reading test is the test that you are required to take before you can uh, go into teach now. You have to attempt it. Well, at $139 for the test, why would you just go in there and attempt it? Okay, if that's what you're going to do, you might as well just throw $139 out of the window, right? You don't want to do that. So that's how much the reading test costs. The reading test not only is four hours, but it has two open-ended questions on that one. Now listen to me for just a minute, you guys. If you really focus on writing those open-ended questions, it will benefit you tremendously. You've got to watch your time, and we'll talk about that. But the score for your open-ended each question, if you get a one point on that open-ended, you get six points added to your total, okay? One point means you restated the question, and that's all you have to do, all right? If you receive a two on that, you get 12 points. Well, most of my students here at UNCP don't pass the test by between two and four points. Oh, wow. Okay, I've had one fellow that's taken it three times and missed it by two points every single time. Oh, okay. If you get a three on it, you, have, you get 18 points added to your score. A four gives you 24 points. That's just the open-ended question, guys. Imagine if you spent the time you needed to on it and you made a four on there. That's 24 points. Okay, so there's a big difference between a 1 and a 2 from 6 to 12 points if most of our kids are not passing between 2 and 4 points, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to think about that. By the time you get to the open-ended question, your brain is fried. 
but you need to like unfry it so that you can focus on this, okay? It's really important. All right, then there's another section of the test, and that's the general curriculum test, general knowledge test. It really is two tests, you guys, and I would look at it as two tests, and I would take one one day and one the next day for a lot of reasons, because then you can focus your studying just on one area and then go take that test and be finished with that, and then you can focus your studying on the other area and go take that test. <coughs> if you take them separately, then you get two and a half hours for the math portion, and the math portion um, has one open-ended question. And then the other one, which is the general knowledge part of it, that has world history, U.S. history, science, English, art, music, all kinds of things like that. That's the hardest one, I'm just telling you, because the content range is huge on that test. And that also has one open-ended question, okay? So if you take them together, which you can, you only get four hours. If you take them separately, you get two and a half hours for math on the day that you take math, and two hours the day you take the general curriculum part of it. So you get a half hour extra, which you need to be able to focus on that open-ended. So yes. I have the question. The reading is one test. Yes. The general knowledge, you can break it up into math and then do the other one. Mm -hmm. So you got three. a total of three tests you would be it's taking. It's three, but if you ask the state, okay. they're going to tell you it's only two. But it really is three. But it really is three. Okay. Okay. So 203, 201, is that what they're, is that something different? The Pearson 90? Mm -hmm. And then 103 and 203? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. I'll show you the website. Okay. You can only sign up for it in one location. Okay. So if you try to go anywhere else to sign up for it, you're signing up for the wrong test. Okay. Okay? All right. So any questions about that, you guys? Yes. Well, I've, ta I've taken the foundation <laughs> test twice already. The first time I made it 205, and I bombed on the second open-ended question. So I really focused my attention more on the open-ended questions this time. I think I made a 213. And um, I thought I got 227. I th yeah, 229. Oh, reading, that's right. Reading is 229, and the other two are 227. And I'll cover that later. So I need some strategy, so this third time I'll take it, I need to pass because that 139 is up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hopefully I can provide some for you. And I would go, if I were you, I would definitely go to that reading. Yeah, Have you been to the reading right. session here yet? No, ma'am. That's next Saturday, right? Okay, yes. Definitely okay. go to that, all right? Okay. She's taken that reading test. She can provide a lot of info for you, okay? All right, any questions, guys? So it is much harder. It's really not designed to see what you know about teaching elementary school or being a special ed teacher. It's really designed to know if you know this content that really doesn't even apply to what we're teaching today. Mm. Okay. The math is algebra and algebra two. We don't teach algebra and algebra two in elementary school. Good, I did that. I did really so well. when you're going to your, uh, like these guys, my students here, when they're in their math classes at the university, we don't even cover that content because that's the, not the content they need to teach kindergarten through fifth grade. So you've got to study on your own. We're going to tell you where to find the info, but you're the one that has to take the responsibility. No geometry, no statistics. A little bit. There's going to be uh, a little bit a little of that bit. in there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> All right, so here's the cost of the test. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to show you what that, that was. My practice, my math, I had to retake. My practice uh -huh. was, my practice too, the math was hard. Uh -huh. Math was tough. It's going to be tough on this. Yeah. I don't want to sugarcoat it, guys. Thought I was done. It's a tough test. Okay. It's a very tough test. It's harder than practice too. Mm. Okay. Great. All right, here's the cost. So the, if you take it together, it's $139. It did go down. It used to be $155, and they lowered the cost a little bit. So it's $139 if you take it together. But, guys, for this one, you don't really want to take it together. The general curriculum, you want to take it separately. So each one is going to be $94. It's a little bit more money, but you're much more likely to pass if you handle it in that direction. Okay? And then um, I just put the passing scores on there. For these two sections, it's $227, and then your reading is $220. And the reading is going to be 139. You can't split that in half because it's a full four-hour test that you take. Guys, when you go into the testing center, you're going to be patted down. The wand is going to be used. Everything you bring is going to be locked up. You're going to be videotaped the entire time that you're taking the test. Just know that ahead of time, okay? You know that little saying, one bad apple spoils a whole bunch? So one or two people went in and took a test for somebody else, and now they have to be very, very strict and ensure that it's really you. The ID that you bring must be a government-issued ID, like a driver's license. So if you showed up with your school ID or something like that, they're not going to let you in, and you're not going to get your money back. Okay, so please make sure you read the directions carefully, 
and you bring the required materials that they tell you to bring so that you don't uh, lose your money because that won't be a very good thing. All right? Questions about the scores and the costs? <coughs> All right, why do you have to take this test? To get your license, right? It's a requirement, and it replaces the Praxis too. Pearson writes this test. All of my students are now held account accountable for EdTPA. Pearson does that. Pearson does all the textbooks for the state. Pearson has something going on with the State Department. Uh, yeah. Don't know what it is, but there's something going on. My dad okay? just retired from Pearson. All right, so. Oh, well, maybe you can inform us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so. That's cute. <laughs> you guys, we have to do it. So if you can't beat it, you have got to join them, right? Mm -hmm. We have to do it. We have to pass this to clear our license. Mm -hmm. It's not an option for us. Mm -hmm. So we have to take responsibility and figure out what we can do individually to ensure that we pass this test. Okay? My first year that this test came into play, my students were like, you didn't prepare me for this. You didn't prepare me for this. I'm like, it's not my job to prepare you for this. It's my job to prepare you to be the best teacher you can be. Mm -hmm. It's your job to figure out how to pass this test. We'll do everything we can. We'll provide practice sessions for free. We'll show you where to go. But I can't make you study. <coughs> You've got to be the one that takes responsibility for that. <coughs> All right, here are the two main reasons for not passing. You're overconfident, like, there's no problem, I can do this, or a lack of preparation. And this is a true story. I was doing a workshop with some of my students, just my students, and um, we did an activity that we're going to do a little bit later with a practice test. And she had already come to the workshop one time, so she's like, oh, here's the answers, you guys, you don't have to study. And she was really being a distraction to the group. And she was very overconfident. All of my interns passed the test except her. Mm. Why? Because she was overconfident. She didn't think she needed to study. She thought she already knew it all, okay? Mm -hmm. We can't go in there overconfident. So, and we have to be prepared though, right? Mm -hmm. If we're not prepared, we can't blame anybody but ourselves for not being ready. All right. How are the tests developed? I don't know, but I know it's from Pearson. Are there trick questions? Supposedly not, but there are some when you need to figure out which answer is the most correct. Yes. Okay, and did you find that when you took this test? <laughs> yeah, okay. And there's a lot of sample items out there for you to look at, and I'm gonna give you a lot of websites that you can go to and look at, but this one website that I'm gonna focus on today is really the main website. My students have tried all kinds of things to study for this, and this Go Math that I'm going to show you today is the one that um, they said by far is the one that helped them the most. In fact, some of them bought practice books and other things, and they said those practice books did not help them at all. And these are some of my very serious students who are very, very uh, focused on studying and being prepared. So. Um, like one of them, she studied the Go Math. She studied a couple books. She bought these flashcards. She was doing everything. The flashcards didn't help her at all. The books she purchased didn't help her at all. But everything on Go Math helped her tremendously. And by the way, she passed all three tests the first time. Wow. So it is possible. Okay, guys? It is possible. I had a student in my office just last week who is a student teacher this semester. And she passed her reading on the first try, but she studied for two months. And she passed it. She's now studied two months for the general knowledge portion of it, and she's scared to death, but she signed up to take it next Saturday. And she'll probably pass it the first time because she has learned all the key terms that I'm getting ready, I'll show you in a little while. And she's familiar with all the other ones. Okay? You've got to do your work. All right, the first thing I want to do is just show you the website where you sign up for the test, okay? And show you what's available on that website. Can I ask a question real quick? Yes, of course. Does it show you your scores right away? No. Uh, and the reason it doesn't is because there's the no open ended on each one. Mm -hmm. So it can't show you your scores. It takes approximately three to four weeks for you to receive your scores back. Oh, that's the and worst. it's because of that open ended test. Uh, By the way, you must score the required score on each section. You can't steal three points from one to add to the other. So you must make 227 on both of the general knowledge part portions, and you must make share. a 229 on the reading, okay? Unfortunately, it's not like the Praxis where you could, or the Praxis one. All right, guys, so on your work. Oh, sorry, there's <laughs> open-ended on both, so you don't, that's yes. why you don't get scores on mm -hmm. it. Got it. Reading okay. has two open-ended, and the other two each have one. So they're not divvied up by, like, here's, I know you said math, you have the open-ended. 
but it's not divvied up by like here's science. You pass science. Here's oh, no. no, no, no. Okay. It's just it's one all... score. Ugh. One cumulative score. Now most of the questions, according to my students, and I don't know, but most of the on the general knowledge portion, most of them come from world history and US history. A lot of world history and US history questions. Mm. Okay? There's some science, <coughs> a little bit of art, a little bit of music, a couple of English. Well I, I took that <coughs> early, so I gotta wait three weeks for my score to come mm -hmm. back. But How I'm was that one? <laughs> She's like, I don't want to discourage you all. <laughs> it's it's rough. It's rough. They're it all is. Rough. But I only mm -hmm. has um science, social studies, and reading on there. Yours did. Yes, ma'am. Right. But it could pull from any of these. Yes. And it's not the same. I, I've had some mm -hmm. that have taken the general knowledge three times. They're open ended. Has been different all three times. Mm. So I know that there's a. A rotation. Yeah. yeah. The man who writes the Go Math uh, website that we're going to look at, he actually was the writer for the math portion of this test. Oh wow! And I'll show you that he he has some workshops that he brings to North Carolina, and he asks you to take the test within two weeks because he knows the rotation of the questions. He's going to prepare you for that. But there's a cost to those workshops. So um, <coughs> anyway, guys, this website that I'm getting ready to show you right here is the website on your agenda. That's right here at the very top, okay? So that if you just do a search for North Carolina Foundations, you're going to find it. This is where you register for your test. If you are anywhere else trying to register, you're at the wrong place, okay? Now, I had an in her. You know, this was based on the Massachusetts test, right? Mm -hmm. And then they came up with this one. So it's very, very similar. The man who does the workshops is from Boston, and he really does a lot of Massachusetts training for teachers prep. I had a student take the Massachusetts test instead of the North Carolina test, okay? So please make sure you're on this website and not that one. Mm -hmm. If she had passed it, but she didn't. Actually, it was the same one who didn't participate. Oh, that was overconfident. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that, that says one. a lot, doesn't it? Okay. So please make sure that this is the website you're on. All right, we're just going to navigate through it a little bit. So if you click on tests, it tells you both tests, and like I said, general curriculum is, list, is listed as one, although it really is two. And then if you want to find out information about it, you just click on it. So I clicked on the reading. It tells you all the information related to the reading test, even the payment, the score dates, how you <coughs> register, prep materials. And there are preparation materials on this website, but hear me, they're not the best. I looked at it. Okay? It wasn't good. Number one, these materials were written when Pearson first came out with this Intel test. They're old. Okay? The test has been updated. If you want to practice taking questions, you know, using questions, absolutely do that. But it's not the best website for you to practice with. These practice tests are not the best. Okay? So just remember that. It's not going to hurt you to look at them, but it's not the best place for you to be, okay? All right, this other website that I'm going to show you in a little while is definitely the best place. But everything is here. So if you want to sign up for the test, guys, you would click register now right here. So this website is a little bit different. When you signed up for Praxis, you chose the location that you wanted to take the test, and then you paid for it. This one, you select the test, you pay for it, and then you go back in and you select where you want to take it. Okay? You can change it up to one week. Oh, that's nice because Praxis is on With no fee. So you just go back in there and you say, oh, this date doesn't work for me. I need to go back and change that's it. Nice. And there's not going to be a penalty for you to change. Okay? For these tests, they're offered most of the time in the morning, in the afternoon, some on Saturday, but during the week, definitely. So you choose the site that you want to be in. If the site doesn't show up, it just means that it's full during that time that you're trying to choose it. Okay? A lot of people go to Fayetteville State, a lot of people go to Wilmington, a lot of people go to Raleigh. There's a testing center in Florence, so it just kind of depends on where, probably a couple of them in Fayetteville, you guys. Mm -hmm. So there's some Fayetteville testing centers State. there as well. Mm -hmm. The testing center may not have the greatest environment. It might be hot in there, mm -hmm. or it might be cold. So dress appropriately so you can take a layer off if you need to, or put a layer on if you need to. That which will make you more comfortable, okay? All right, so think about that as you're going. They probably don't allow you to take any food or drink in there because they don't want you to spill it on the computer. The math test might be more difficult for you to find a location for that. 
because the math test has to have a specific scanner in that room because you can write on paper and scan it in for the math and if you do that um, obviously that tool has to be there well the testing center has to pay the money to provide that tool and many of the testing centers don't want to so you might take your other two somewhere else and then try to take your math there and the math might not be offered there if it's not it's because they don't have the right equipment in there okay all right so for all three tests, it has the same kind of information. You can go in and pay for all three at the same time, and then you come back in. I don't have an account in here, so I, I can't show you that portion of it. But then it's going to ask you what state, um, what cities, or put your zip code in, and then you find the location that works best for you. All right? Okay, so that's the reading. If I click on the general curriculum, you notice it has both of those tests, multi-subject and mathematics. Again, the same types of things here. And the prep materials look like this. So there's a practice test. There's a couple open-ended questions on here. It would not hurt you to look at the open-ended questions, guys, and then to read the responses to the open-ended questions just to see how they're scored. Okay, and I'm going to give you a little formula for the math. And the formula came right from the man who wrote <coughs> that he does the Go Math workshops. Because, you know, my kids come back and they share with me. I've had a few kids that have gone to those workshops. So they'll share the info with me. So I'll share that with you. And by the way, the reason I asked for your email address is because I'm going to email you this PowerPoint stuff after the fact so you can have these materials, okay? All right. So you don't have to, like, take a whole bunch of notes and stuff. So this is the math. So with the math, there's a little video tutorial teaching you how to scan. So you might want to look at that ahead of time just so you understand how to use the scanning tool so that it doesn't take you extra time. One other thing, listen, this is really important, you guys. When you complete the open-ended questions, you must click the Submit button. If you do not click Submit, you will score one. Oh. Okay? You have to click the Submit. So you know how sometimes we work until the timer runs out? Can't. If you don't submit, you're going to get a one. You have to click submit for that open ended. Okay? <clears throat> All right, so let me see. So here's a, um, <clears throat> for you to register. So you would just sign up, but again, I don't have a sign in and I don't really want to create one because I don't need to take a test. Mm -hmm. um, scores. So you can view your results, but again, it's going to take approximately three weeks. So everything you need to know about this test is right here on this website. But if it doesn't look like this, North Carolina Foundations of Reading and General Curriculum, you're at the wrong place. Okay? Questions about this website or anything to do with this? Good. All right. Okay, so what can you do? How can you prepare? Number one, you need to make a plan. What is your plan for studying? How are you going to prepare? Number two, you've got to devote the time. And number th three, when you go in there, you need to be prepared. So I tell my students at UNCP, what do I tell y'all? Make flashcards. Make flashcards. There was that app. He showed us all those websites with all those terms on there. Take flashcards everywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> Take your flashcards everywhere you go. <laughs> Study a red line. What about time? What did I tell you about time? You cut whatever um, oh, yeah. recreational activity you're doing, mm -hmm. TV, whatever, Facebook, in half. Into all right, we come from a social world, don't we, guys? All right, a lot of you have your phones out right now. We come from a social world. It's hard for us to disconnect from that world. So what I tell the kids is, think about all the time you spend on social, and I'm not being critical. I'm just saying think about this because we all say, I don't have time, right? Mm -hmm. We all have such busy lives. Many of us are working, and we're parents, and we're doing all kinds of things, maybe taking care of elderly parents as well, and there's a lot on our plate. So where in the world am I going to find the time, right? So what I tell the kids is, think about the time you spend on social media, on your phone, watching Netflix series, because I hear them talk about that all the time, <laughs> okay? Watching TV. If you think about all the time that's spent in all of those areas, and you just cut it in half, and take half of that time and study every day, then you've got time, right? Mm -hmm. If you work out, put your materials on your treadmill and read them while you're going or have your flashcards and use your flashcards. I was in Columbia one day during exam time at USC and there was a girl beside me at a red light going through her flashcards at the red light. 
You've got to take advantage of every bit of time that you have. If you're riding in the car with somebody else, have your flashcards. Be practicing. Another thing that works great that really helped me with the GRE, I read my flashcards and recorded them, and I played it in my ear all the time. I played it on my radio in my car so that I could hear those things over and over and over. And then I kind of heard that stuff in my mind when I was taking my test. All right, so there's a lot of ways that you can prepare, but you've got to do it. You've got to make your plan and devote your time so that you're prepared. The time to not prepare is the night before. <laughs> do not try to prepare the night before because when you go in that next day for your test, you need to be relaxed, your brain needs to be cleared, you need to have enough rest. So the best thing that you can do the night before is go to a movie and have a good dinner, go home and go to sleep, and go the next day. Don't try to study the next day, I mean that morning on the way, or the night before. Everything should already be done so that you can go in fresh, ready to go. Okay? If you're that like studying like this on the way, then when you get in there to take your test, you are uptight. Yeah. Okay? You've already got the stress in your brain, and the stress in your brain keeps you from thinking like you need to think. Okay? Hello, ladies. How are you? If you could please sign in and get an agenda. So, three things. Make a plan, devote your time, and be prepared. Okay? It's your responsibility to do those things. Unfortunately, nobody else can do that for you because only you can take your own brain in there to take your test. All right. <coughs> All right. Time can be your greatest enemy during the test because it is timed. How long do you have for the reading test? Four hours. Four hours. Good job. How long do you have for the math test if you take it separately? Two and a half. Two and a half. And for the general knowledge? Two, two and a half. Two. two. Only two hours. Okay? Yeah. How long do you have if you take those two together? Four, four, four hours. hours. And guess what? They don't separate it. They don't say two hours, eh, end of that test. Two hours, eh, end of that test. The timer just goes for four hours. So if some, for some reason you're taking the math test and you take three hours on the math test, you only have an hour to do that otherwise, okay? So it really is your benefit to do one at a time and to really focus on that one. You can wear a watch in there if it is a normal watch, like an old-timey watch. Okay? <laughs> if it's an Apple watch that you have on, or the, any watch that is going to be computerized in some way, they will make you take it off and put it inside your locker. But you can have the time running on your screen or not. You can choose to do that, okay? For me, that stresses me out. I can't handle that. But it's up to you. Also, you can there, pop on and look at it, right? Yes. Okay. And there should be a clock on the wall somewhere in there. So watch your time. You need to watch your time because you need approximately 30 minutes for your open-endedness. Okay? All right. Don't dwell on a question. If you're reading a question and you're reading it over and over and over and you have no clue, do you think reading it over and over and over more is going to help you learn it? No. Okay? So don't dwell on that. And I'll tell you what to do with that in a minute. But don't rush at the same time. Okay? So don't dwell, but don't rush. So time can be your biggest enemy in this test because time also causes stress, right? So you have to know and practice ahead of time that be prepared. Time yourself on those practice tests that you work on. Questions about this? How many questions or on the, you don't know? I don't know the answer. Okay. It probably tells you on that foundation's webpage, though. Okay. It's about 75, I think. Do you know? 55. 55. 55, mm -hmm. 55 and then the open ended. For the reading, it was? 100. 100 for the reading. But it's four hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When you say um, 30 minutes, allow yourself 30 minutes with each. Take them in. 55 on the tickets. I would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would. So listen, guys, for example, the reading test, when you've taken reading tests and praxis and uh, SAT and those kinds of things, what does the reading test look like? It's read passages, right? Read passages and answer these questions. The reading test is not like that. You need to know the content. It's going to ask you about the content. So, for example, there might be a question that says, which of these is an example of an onomatopoeia? Oh. All right? So if you know what an onomatopoeia is, then you should get that question right. Anybody know what it is? Sound um, it's a sound word. Sound Pow, word. Wow, Pow, wow, wow. Those kinds of words. Okay. Oh. So they will have four words listed, and you've got to pick the word that's an example of an onomatopoeia. They're looking to see if you know the content. All right? 
That's I what it was. And I didn't know how to pronounce it, so I'm glad you pronounced it for me. Oh, good. You mean that was really a question on there? Something related to it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah, well, we should all get that one right. That's now. right. See, you know that. There's a question, okay? All right. So, <laughs> Yay. just know you're not going to go in there and read passages and answer questions related it's to the not passages. Comprehension. That's not yeah. what it's about, okay? It's about so do no you know the content wrong. related to teaching reading? And I'm going to show you all the terms you need to know before you go in there. And no heart attacks allowed in this room today. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Listen, guessing is not guesswork. So, you know that question I told you about a minute ago, don't dwell, right? Mm -hmm. We read it, we keep reading it. I have no clue what that means. But I'm gonna read it again and maybe I'll get it. And I'm gonna read it again. <coughs> and I'm gonna spend five minutes on that? Absolutely not. You read it, you have no clue, you guess, and that's it. But here's the guessing part. You choose one letter before you go in there and that's what you guess every time. C. <laughs> Whatever letter you want to choose, it's always C. You oh. choose that letter, okay? Come on, come on, come on. It's, it's always C. <laughs> You're it's more likely to get some of them right if you always like choose the same letter. Oh, <laughs> if you randomly choose letters every time, then you might miss it every single time. Okay? So guessing is not really guesswork. Can you mark a question and go back later? Because that's what you could do on the praxis, too. You can mark you can. one and then it will show you. You haven't done this one. <clears throat> but I think you can. Uh, my kids okay. said you could. But okay. I like that. You, did you try that? I did. Okay. Or write it down. Like and it might tell you on the website. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm pretty sure you can. And uh, at break, I'll text one of my kids and ask them. Okay. Because that's okay, awesome. so I can tell you for sure. So you're not spending, like, you say, I don't know, I'll go back later. That's right. Yeah. But look, if you don't know, you don't know. Just pick one, too, Just and then write it down. Go. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, don't even, so why are you going to go back to it if you didn't have a clue to begin with? I'm just saying, because you need those 30 minutes for yes. your open-ended, right? right? So you pick your letter, open so just and then you write it down, number eight, and then you go back later. If you have That's time. right. Work it out, your open-ended yep. done. Only if you've done that. Right. If you have time after the open-ended. Mm -hmm. If not, you've already put an answer. Brain, go ahead. Okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. So I want you to practice smarter, but not harder. Okay? And in order to practice smarter and not harder, you have to be prepared, right? So find relevant resources, which those are the things I'm going to share with you today, the ones that have worked for our kids at UNC. <coughs> and many of them, guys, not just one or two, many of them have passed the first time they've taken it. And those kids were the diligent kids who actually study and prepared ahead of time, okay? But they study these materials that I'm going to show you, and they passed the first time. Again, it's not worth throwing $139 out the window. So why are you showing up not prepared? You've got to put the time and effort into it. It's so critical. Do you have a recommendation on which <laughs> test to take first, or is it just pick what you think will because be Because the state requires you to have reading, I tell my kids to do reading first. Mm -hmm. Now, my student who was in my office last week, her strength is math, so she's saving math for the end. Because like she knows done. she has less yeah. time to study for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's going to take less time to study for that because she was a math concentration. Right. She's very good with math. And these other two that she knew she had to spend a lot of time studying, she studied those first. Now, she passed her reading test the first time. But she studied for two months. She prepared her materials and she studied. And remember what I just told you, if you just cut all those social things in half, TV and all those things in half, and you've already got your cards made, we look at it as an overwhelming, because I'm going to show you a hundred terms that you need to know. You go, a <gasps> hundred. Well, what if you did five a day? Yeah. Yeah. Then you've got your cards made, right? Yeah. But if you look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got all these 100 made now. The then it's month. very overwhelming for you. So split it up. Or 10 a day. In 10 days, you have all your cards made. Right? And you can do 10 a day. That's not going to be much. But 100, when you, you know, it's overwhelming. So break it up. Make that plan. Think about something that works for you that's doable for you. Okay? Now, there are some practice tests and on this sheet that I'm going to give you later. There's lots of websites. And again, I'm going to email this um, PowerPoint to you so you can just click on the links. It's easier than trying to type all those long links in. But there's some sites that have practice tests on them. If you choose to do the practice test, the first time you take one, I want you to do it without worrying about time. Take your time. Take notes on a piece of paper. If there's a question that you're reading and you have absolutely no clue about it, Go ahead and make your card right then. Go ahead and make your card right then, okay? I don't know what this means. Put that information on the front, okay? Take your time. Then, after you finish it, it gives you the answer key. But the answer key is valuable because it gives you all the explanations about why those are right. 
So even if you get the question right, you need to read the answer key anyway. Because sometimes we just guess and we get it right. We don't really know the content, right? So when you're reading the answer, even if you got it right, and you go, wow, I didn't have any clue about that, what are you going to do? Write it, down. Write it down or make a flashcard or whatever works for you to study, okay? Have a little microphone, read it in there, whatever you do, however you work, okay? All right? So don't just check the ones you missed because you may have gotten a lot right that you just guessed on and you got lucky. Okay, so the first time you take it, don't worry about time. Use it as a study guide, make your notes, do that kind of thing, okay? The second time you take it, <coughs> take it with your time constraints, but still use notes if you have them, okay? But try to stay on, on task as far as time. But you can use your notes that you've already used. But remember, you're on a time frame this time, so you're gonna have to go a little faster, right? And then the last time you take it, no notes and time constraint, okay? And practice like that. And it doesn't mean you only do it three times. If you need more times than that, then maybe you want to do it like this two or three times, and then like this two or three times, and then like this two or three times. And there's a lot of different tests, so you wouldn't be taking the same one every time on this one website that I'll show you, okay? And you pay, it, is, it does cost you money, but it's not that expensive, mm. and it's cheaper for the number of practice tests that you purchase, okay? But the key is looking at the answer key after the fact, guys, and read all of it, right? Questions about that? Why do you think number four is important? That's how the actual that's test is going to be. Yes, because and that's how the actual test uh -huh. is going to be. So you know you're going to be timed in the end. But the first two times that you're practicing, the goal is not to stress out about time. The goal is to really take a look at the content that you're going to be expected to know. All right, this is our biggest problem, right? Uh -huh. So we have to prepare without procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, my test is in a week and I haven't looked at a note yet. <laughs> I better cram for a week. Okay, that's not the best strategy to use. And that's when you go in there all stressed out. And you know what happens when you do that also? Everything that you studied is all confused in your brain. Because you haven't studied it well enough to really know it. So it's just a mumbo jumbo in your brain. And that's not what you want, okay? So if you want to maximize your chances for success, you need to be prepared in advance and focus, all right? Never take a test just to practice the test, <laughs> like you were talking about. Everybody who goes in doesn't pass it the first time. Well, that's because they weren't prepared to go in the first place. Probably. They didn't prepare as much as they needed to, okay? You've got to be prepared before you go. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my students who did prepare, they all passed it the first time. Those that study for a week, most of them didn't. All right, you've got to be prepared. And we try to add a lot of that preparation in our classes now, like our intro to reading class. Now they have to write the definitions. They have to have definitions on cards for these hundred um, words and phrases that I'm going to show you related to the reading content part. In our math class, they have to watch the math videos. So we do some practice for them, but it's really their homework assignments. It really has nothing to do with what's being taught in the class. But at least we're getting them exposed to some of these things so that they can uh, hopefully be prepared and spend extra time preparing. All right? Well, I don't have the money to throw out the window, so I would never go in and take that test just to do a test, okay? Because the state says you have to attempt the reading test. Well, I'm not going to attempt it for $139. So, and nobody's going to pay me back for it, so. All right. <clears throat> time is money, right? So the more time you put into this, hopefully the less money you put into it because maybe you only have to take it one time. So benchmark your abilities. In other words, the first time you take that practice test that I talked about a minute ago, how'd you do on it? How much did you really know? What will you do now based on what you learned? Okay? Don't panic or give up, and remember you have to persevere. And don't beat yourself up because you don't know it. Many of you have not been in school for many, many years and have not had algebra and algebra two and geometry and a little bit of statistics and some of those things, okay? I was a math whiz when I was in school. In fact, my minor was math. So when I took the GRE five years ago to get my doctorate, I didn't study the math part too much. But I've been teaching elementary school for 30 years, you know, 24 years at that point before I came over here. Now I teach people to be elementary teachers. I hadn't used that math. And this is how I took that test. I'd read a question and I'd say, oh my gosh, I should know how to do this. <laughs> that's what I thought every time why didn't I look at that I get to another question I'm like oh gosh I know there's a formula that goes with this I should know this 
You know, and that's how I felt she throughout the whole it. test. Yeah. Now, I took the test over because I wasn't happy with my score. I think my score would have been accepted at UNCW, but I wasn't happy with it. And I studied the second time. I raised my score 200 points in math. Wow. Just in math mm -hmm. on the GRE. Because you Because spent. of the way I just told you that I felt. Okay? Don't go in there and do that to yourself. And the GRE is way more than $139. So don't throw your money away like I did. Okay? Go prepared ahead of time. And that's what I should have done, and I didn't. So learn from my mistake and don't do that. All right. You're going to prepare, preparing for a multiple choice test because a majority of your test is multiple choice, right? 55 questions or 100 questions, multiple choice. So how do you do it? The first thing you know, need to do is learn what the content is. What is this test that you're getting ready to take covering? And then assess what you know in your brain by preparing ahead of time. Collect all your materials. This is repeating itself, isn't it, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Plan and organize your time. And then you have to study. So you spent all this time making these great note cards. Use them. And they're just sitting on the table. How's it going <coughs> to You've got to use them. Remember what they said? At stoplights, riding in the car, record it, whatever. You can record it and then play your phone in your car and listen to it and guess the answers, right? So you've got to find ways that work for you. Get in the bathtub and play it. Lay in the bathtub and hold your cards and study them. Whatever. Think about those things when you don't have responsibility with something else and you can study. Five minutes before you go to sleep every night. Whatever. You've got to find the time to do it. Okay? You've got to find the time. So here are some key words that you need to pay attention to when you're taking this, guys. Least, not, accept, and best. Those are kind of trick words, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Least really means the wrong answer, correct? What is the least? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not also means the wrong answer. Except can mean the wrong answer or the right answer, depending on how the question is stated. <coughs> so you need to look out for these four words in your questions. And guess what? They use them a lot. Because mm -hmm. <coughs> they want to know if you are really paying attention. And remember that slide I showed you, are there trick questions? Yeah. Well, I think there are some. Yeah. Because when they use these terms, I think they're kind of tricky because you're saying, well, are they asking me, is it or is it not? Right? So you've got to read that question carefully and see what the question is asking you. I did a practice test, and I missed a few of them on the practice test, <coughs> and I went back and I realized I didn't read the question correctly. And then when I read the question correctly, I was like, oh, I knew that answer. Okay, so that's when you go back to that time is your greatest enemy but you need to be thorough as well. So as you're reading it, you need to make sure that you're reading that question carefully and you understand what that question means before you answer it. Sometimes we read a little bit and we see an answer we think is right and we just pick it right away, but read that question thoroughly to make sure you're understanding what that question means. You guys good? Questions? Okay. You have to know your vocabulary, and this is the key website right here. Yes. Can I say something back sure. to that back slide? Sorry. Yep. Mm. With praxis, choosing the best answer, you know, they say choose the best answer. You have to look at it because sometimes there could be multiple ones. And the way the praxis works is you would get four if you pick the correct one, three if you pick the next one, you know, and mm. one point could be the difference of passing or not. So really right. read all the read all the answers too. Like you might think you know it right away, but there mm. could be another better answer. So that's, that's right. My and this one you either get it or you don't. You okay. don't get extra points. Okay. But, guys, you must answer every question because you don't lose points for getting it wrong. You only gain points for getting it right. So if you leave it blank, there's no way you can gain any points, okay? But they don't take points away from missing it, like some tests do. So please answer everything. Choose that C or whatever that letter is you want to choose and answer it. Don't leave anything blank because you don't have a chance to get it right if it's blank, okay? All right. This website... is the bomb, all right? Mm -hmm. So it has vocabulary for all three sections of the test, and I'm going to open it up for you in just a second. Okay. Um, <coughs> he calls it the Top 100 Challenge. Now, he, the guy who wrote this, and I can't remember what his name is, but he does workshops all the time in Boston. But the students who come have to do this homework pri prior to attending his workshop. So they already know these 100 key terms, mm -hmm. all right? 
Make flashcards or whatever works for you. Put it in a notebook. I don't know what works for you. Flashcards just work for me, so I have to say flashcards. But the thing with flashcards, you can go through them, and when you know that, you can kind of move that one aside and then just pull it in every now and then, and then I can study those things I really need to know. And when I have it in a notebook, the answer's right there, and sometimes I tend to read the answer on the flashcard. The answer's on the back, so I don't cheat. Okay, but I don't know. Whatever works for you, because some things work differently for others. So whatever your studying skills are. So the, the website is gohmath.com. And again, it's on your worksheet there, but I'm going to go there now and show you how this works. Now, every single time you click on that, a video, this website, a video starts. So you have to go down here and turn them off. Every time you go to a new page, a video starts. So everything is right across here, all right? Now, this is a guy who has workshops, and he does have workshops in North Carolina. They're coming up pretty soon. So this is a general curriculum multi-subject in Raleigh. It has four seats left. Um, see, it's $299 for, the, for one day. Mm. It's 150 if you register early, but we've already oh, sorry, but we've already missed the early registration for this one. Okay. There's a general curriculum and a reading, and I think all of them we've missed the early registration. Wow. Well, this one has an early registration still, so it's 199 for the day. But if you study, like I told you, you don't need to go to his workshops, okay? So, but I just want you to know they're there. Thank God. <coughs> and some of our students choose to go to those workshops because they don't want to make the cards and study. They think if they just go to that one day workshop, they're going to be ready to take the test. But doesn't he want not. you to do it anyways? That's yeah. right. Okay? They're not. <laughs> All right, so right here where it says resources, guys, this is what you need to be familiar with, okay? And there's only three tabs in these resources. Math homework, multi-subject homework, and reading foundations homework. Okay? So I just clicked on the multi-subject homework. Remember, he has that top 100 each time, okay? The video's going to start playing. Just turn him off. Okay, take a look at this. Don't have a heart attack. Remember, no heart attacks allowed in here today. All right, these are the main categories on this test. This is just the multi-subject portion of the test. Okay? Remember the top 100, all right? Anything in black in all of these categories, you better know and you better know really well. Okay? His top 100, he puts in black. Those are the things you are going to see on your test. And look, this is not all of it. Check it out. There's more. Keep going and going. Okay? Look at this list. This right. makes me not want to do it. <laughs> I know. But here's the deal, guys. Everything that you need to know is right here. You don't have to go anywhere else. I okay? like having a concise website. Now, even better for most of these things, not every single one, but for most of them, Can you click on if that? you click on the link, it takes you to the information. Oh. Right? Now, he's only done that in the last couple of years. It wasn't like that before. Okay? And then you can get the notes that you need. Now, when it says children's literature, picture books, I mean, you need to be able to. That read is it. like big, broad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he's probably taking you to something that you might need to know about. And it might be a question that asks you how you would implement this certain piece of children's okay. lit. And I know that there are questions on there similar like that, more on the reading test than this one. And there's um, some. <clears throat> so. You need to know the difference between these, like reliability and validity. What's the difference between those? You need to know that, okay? There's a, we're going to do some practice <coughs> with amendments on here. In, in class, we're going to do some practice with amendments. So listen, one time, one of the open-ended questions was, and I don't know the um, amendment numbers because the kids won't tell me everything because you have to sign and say that, that you are not going to share the information. But they said they're open-ended on this multi-subject was to compare two amendments. 
and it said like Amendment 13, Amendment 18, but those, oh those weren't the numbers. Okay, I don't know what the numbers were because the kids didn't tell me. But they said to compare these two amendments, and it gave them the numbers. That was the question. That was the opening question. They didn't tell them the name of the amendment, just no, the numbers. The numbers. Oh, I wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, you will. I get my today. son to do that for me. You will after yeah. today. Okay. All right. So I know that that was one of the questions. So when we do a little bit of practice, that's what we're going to practice with today. Okay. And you're going to see how easy it is to learn some of it if you study. All right. Okay, now, if I went in, I'm not a social studies history person. I learned it for school, made an A, and then it's gone. <laughs> it's not in my brain, okay? So, a lot of this stuff I look at, I'm like, oh my gosh, right? So, like the Boston Tea Party. What did the Boston Tea, what was the purpose of the Boston Tea Party? We know what happened. They threw all of it in the, in the water. Taxes? But what was the they reason? Were what was the purpose? Can you talk about it? Because the another one of my text. students told me that they had an open-ended question related to the Boston Tea Party. That's all they said. Yes. The one I took was on uh, science evolution. Science I mean, evolution. Um, space. Something. Space and evolution. Know, something like that. Radiation. Space. Ra something. And I. Mm. Space <laughs> radiation. <laughs> so, but the terms are I'm here, done. guys. <laughs> so if one. you have studied the terms here, Just restate that question. <laughs> <laughs> now remember what I told you. When you look at this, it's overwhelming, right? Mm -hmm. yes. But if you choose ten of those black words a day and do your study preparation however you do your study preparation. In 10 days, you have all of your study stuff that you need for this, right? Doesn't mean ignore all those orange and blue and green and blue things, mm -hmm. but you don't really have to know them as in depth. So you could be familiar with those other things, but website. you must know those in bold black. Yes. I have been going to Quizlet. Quizlet is good. In fact, I use Quizlet. Because you can put any of the content in there that you want. And Quizlet is one of the websites that I have on the back of this okay. for use. Because you create your own practice test on Quizlet. But you have to make sure you're using the right content that you're studying. Okay? All right, so this is general curriculum, guys. But sometimes you go in there and find a more All right, now I'm going to show you the math. Here. Remember, every time you click, turn him off first, okay? Or he'll start talking to you. So what's good about the math is it has little three to five minute videos that explain every single question related to math. So again, when you scroll down, you're going to start right here. Anything that says 03, until 03, you need to know. Everything in black. Check it out. Look up here for a minute. Everything <laughs> in black. That says M03. Remember, it has the O3, okay? But here's the deal. This is awesome because it's like having a live teacher that teaches you all this stuff. So you click on one of these. Chris Abram, that's his name. So this one's on place value. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. All right, the first thing you're going to do is turn it off and solve that problem. So go for it. Oh, oh hold on. All right, so maybe you don't know how to solve this problem, okay? Hello. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to show you what happens next. But what I want you to do is to do exactly what you're doing now when you do these. Try to solve it before okay. you go any further. Okay. All right, if I don't know how to solve it, whatever, do your best. Show a little bit of work, try to figure it out, and then continue to play it. I'm going to do number one on the general this curriculum three math minutes subtest. And 25 seconds. This is part of the Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop series. And if you're interested in going to those, you can attend Sorry, any of the minutes. workshops that are coming up. Just go to gomath.com or you... I'm just going to move them a little further. The value represented by the digit 1 is what fraction of the value represented by the digit 2? It's a great problem. There's some key words here. Words that uh, give us clues on how to think about this problem. The first one if we're, uh, is the value. second one is represent. Third one is digit. These are all clues that are going to help us. And then there's one more, there's one more really special one. Fraction. Fraction. And guess what? 
I can also see that it's using fractions in the answer choices. So no matter what I do, I'm going to be using fractions, something with a part to a whole. Okay, so now let's look at the ones I have in red. These are keywords. Keywords are like understanding the concept that you need to know in order to open up a door. If you don't understand the core concept, it's very hard to open up that door. You could pound on it, you could smash it, but you know what? You're not going to open it. But if you know the keywords, then all you need to do is turn the doorknob. In this case, those keywords help us understand the idea in this problem, understand the idea of place value. Because this is a place value. In one way, this is very much a place value problem. They're asking about the different digits in that number. So if we think about this, this question in terms of, of place value, I think we're going to be in a really good spot. So in terms of place value, if we look at the number 2010, and we just, if we just examine the place value of the digits, um, let's say we could do 0, 1, 0, 2. Well, the first digit is in the ones column. The second digit is in the tens column. The third is in the hundreds. The fourth is in the thousands. So if we're, if we're curious about the, the value represented by the digit 1, well, isn't that the same as we have 1, 10? So that digit 1 is really equal to 10. And in the 2, the digit 2, well, isn't that I have 2 1,000s? So the value represented by the digit 2 is really 2,000. Now, another way to think about, when we go back to this problem, when we read it, it's kind of wordy. So I, I recommend to teachers to make your life easier. Make your life easier by taking this phrase, the value represented by the digit 1, and crossing it out. Because that really is just another way of saying 10, right? So uh, let's think about it in terms of what it's really saying. Just 10. You see why I did that? And then that? this phrase here, the value represented by the digit 2, well, that's just a fancy smancy way of saying 2,000. Now let's add in this idea of the fraction. A fraction, we always have a part to hold. So in the number 2010, 10 is what fraction of 2,000. Well, we have our fraction right here. 10 divided by 2,000. Um, now we can do a bunch of different things, but so some teachers say, well, choice? cross out the zeros. This is true, but form. let's think of it another way. Let's think of it, let's think of it as dividing by a factor of 10. And when we do later videos um, using, uh, um, using fractions, we'll talk about why we're dividing by factors of 10 or why I'm even doing this. But I think it's important to think about it, and so you should start thinking about it on the first problem. 10 divided by um, 10 is 1, and 2,000 divided by 10 is 200. This helps us conveniently get to the answer. I like this problem a lot. It has key words, which lead us to understand um, to thinking about the idea of place value. It also starts us thinking about the idea of fractions. All right. Now, when he showed you how to solve it, it was easy, right. <laughs> wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But when you first looked at that problem and you read it, what were you thinking and feeling? Oh my, oh my gosh! I got right? the bad. All right. So for every single one of those bold black that have the O3, he does a little video just like that and teaches you how to do it for free instead of paying $200 to go to his workshop. <laughs> He's doing exactly the same thing here, all right? So if I were making a flashcard with this, I would put this problem on one side, and on the back I would draw out exactly what he did with the 1 over 200, crossing out those words to help me remember how to solve that problem. Once he did that, man, that was simple, right? If you knew that ahead of time, that problem would take you about five seconds to solve. Yes. Mm -hmm. you say, say that again, how you would make a math flashcard. I would put this on the front. The problem itself. The problem on the front. And you can abbreviate if you want to or not. It's up to you. You're going to see it like that on the test, so why wouldn't you write it like that? Okay? Again, it's a hundred of them, so you could do ten or five a day, right? Making those cards. And then on the back, I would show my work, how to solve it. And you might, as he's doing the video, you might be doing it. And you, did you see how he used different colors to help you yes. represent the different thinking patterns? So you might want to have some different colored pens available for you to do that so that you can show that. Then when you go back and look at it, you go, oh, yeah, I remember how to do this. I'm, all I'm doing is looking at the place value. When you first read that, did any of you really think about place value? 
That's how I did it. Okay, good, good. But some people, maybe they didn't, okay? But once, as soon as you put it in the place value uh, category in your brain, you're like, oh, this is people, right? But there's a hundred of them, guys. These little videos, there's a hundred of them. Each one explains it in about three to five minutes. Again, if you don't understand it, listen again. Watch him again. He's going through it step by step. This is free. There's no charge for you in this. This is what my students say help them to pass the test. Now, can you do this the night before? No. 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 Can you do this a week before? No. 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 Okay. That's what I'm talking about with time. So, you guys, the resources are here, and they're free for you. But you've got to be the one that steps up to the plate and take advantage of them. Okay? Any questions about the math site? No. You can see how beneficial it is for you, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so let me just turn him off so he won't start talking to me. Okay. <clears throat> Remember that you're looking for the O3 here because he's got practice things for some other tests on here as well. This okay? The O3. The O3. The math O3. But go all the way down to the very bottom because it's kind of mixed in with some of these things. Yes. We have to take the special ed curriculum. Would that be the same? Um. The foundations test is one test for everyone. Okay, gotcha. Now you guys also have to take a Praxis II special ed, and there's another workshop for that. That's not okay. me. I don't do that. But our university does have it. They just okay. haven't planned them yet for this semester. Okay. So you can just contact brian.winters at uncp, and it's B-R-Y-A-N, brian.winters, and any of you that need to take the Praxis II and special ed. B-R-Y-A-N dot Winters at UNCP dot edu. And just ask him when the Praxis II uh, workshop for special ed will be offered, and then you, and that's free for you as well. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, let's take a five-minute break. Go, go use the restroom and come back, and then I'll show you the last portion of the <coughs> <coughs> Okay. I've only, I have my license for Virginia. Oh. So, yeah. I've taken all the time. The reading. No peeking, honeycut. No peeking, that's right. No peeking. The reading is designed in the same way as the first one that I showed you. Everything that's bold and black is the term that you need to know for the reading test. What's the number for reading? 100, 100, oh. I don't know. Uh, 90 maybe? Maybe 90. So it is like math, it had 03. This is just Yeah, but it doesn't all, matter because when you go, yes, all of okay. it here. Okay. All of it, okay? But all of the reading, guys, you click on it. <coughs> oh. Now that worked yesterday. Let's see. So you click on it, it gives you the information that you need. Predicting was what that word was, so here is your information. Wow. Okay? Now, just take a look at this for a minute and look at these first five right here. Oh, what do you notice? They all got the same word in it. They all have the same word, but guess what? They all mean something completely different. So you must be able to distinguish the difference between all of those. Yes. Yes. Can I say something? Yes, Even though we may have gone through a whole year of becoming a teacher, when you're in school, your mindset is to learn this and get it over with. That was mine. But what's at the top? Phonological awareness, probably segmenting, blending, all of that. You really don't get the full knowledge of what it is until you're sitting in the classroom and you're having to work with the child. But yet and still, North Carolina, Massachusetts, and everybody else expect you to be able to retain this. But I actually went to a workshop, and when it comes to phonemic awareness, all of the blending, the segmenting, the rhyming, is like it's underneath a big umbrella. And like I said, I went through four years of school plus, and I sat in a workshop maybe five or six years later. Boom, aha, I got it. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, if it's something, you do it over repeatedly, 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 you're getting a good knowledge in here. Uh -huh. Yes, when you sit down and take the test, yes, you're going to pass it. But when you come out of college after four years, if you have not gotten it and you don't have the full understanding, you're not going to pass the test unless you repeatedly, repeatedly, five right. times, five um, index cards a day, ten index cards a day, maybe 
when you go in, you're going to pass it. But you and need one, someone like you're you. You're exactly right. You are exactly right. And look, one of your questions might say which of these is an, is an example of a phoneme. Mm -hmm. Phoneme is the same. And it's got those, you know, different choices for you. Yeah. If you don't know what a phoneme is, maybe you're confused with phonemic awareness. Mm -hmm. right. Right? right. Because those terms are very, very similar. similar. Right. So, guys, you've got to study. You've got to know it. You've got to understand it, okay? Every single one of these you click on, it's going to give you some information. Okay? Some of them, it actually compares some of the things, so it helps you see and visualize <coughs> how they're different. Mm -hmm. But you've got to prepare. So, again, there's 100 of them, 100 terms for reading, and they're all bold. Okay? If you know it, and you know you know it, like a KWL chart, most of us know what a KWL chart is. We've used those forever. They're old and ancient, okay? Mm -hmm. If you haven't used one, I'm not being critical that you don't know what it is, okay? But even when... I was in school 100 years ago, we had KWL charts that we used, okay? And maybe your school just didn't use it. But when you click on that link, and normally it works, I don't know why it didn't work just then, but it just brings up a KWL chart so you can see what it looks like. And what do you use a KWL chart for? Um, brainstorming. Yeah, writing. That's yes. what you use it for, brainstorming. So on your open-ended question, maybe you could say you're going to use a KWL chart, depending on what that question is, okay? By the way, guys, in your open-ended questions, you must talk about formative and summative assessment in some way. Formative assessment forms your opinion on learning. What are you going to teach them? Okay? Based on what this child did, what are you going to do? That's formative assessment. Summative is not going to be in this, most likely. But if you were to apply summative, that's kind of like that test at the end. That's what the summative is. It sums it all up. Formative forms your opinion to teach it. Summative sums it all up. That's kind of like little things to help you remember it. But you got to talk about that. If you want to get above that one, you've got to talk about how you're going to assess student learning. What did they do wrong in their thinking in this question? Tell me what's really right and tell me how you teach them. Okay? You've got to have all those parts in that open ended. If you don't, you're going to stay at the one. That's why you need that 20 or 30 minutes to apply your thinking and your writing to that. They don't care if you're writing paragraphs, guys. You could bullet it for all they care. They are looking for very specific things in that. And if you have those specific things, we're going to practice an open-ended today. And we're going to look at it and see, okay? All right, so you know where to find the key terms? You know where to find every single thing you need to study? And for the most part, you guys, all you do is click on it and the information is right there. If not, you can just search for it. The math is so detailed that it even teaches you how to do everything. Yeah. But you have to be the one that applies yourself to doing it. This way, website is free, okay? And remember, he has those workshops that you can pay for to go to, but he's teaching you everything that's right here. He wrote these websites. He did this, okay? But you have to be the one who is disciplined to do your thing, all right? Questions about Go Math? Now there's one other thing that my students use besides Go Math, and it's an app on your phone, and it's called MTEL. It's a little turquoise app. It used to be free, but now it's become popular, so I think it costs 99 cents or $1.99 or something. <coughs> now it's $4.99. Okay, so it was 99 cents, wow. then it was $1.99, <laughs> and now it's $4.99. <laughs> Inflation, okay? Mine was free, so I still have mine on there for free. But Wow. It's only $4.99 instead of $139 you're throwing out the window. All right, that's what you have to remember. So it makes flashcards. It has games you can play. If you have a buddy that you came with, you guys can play games with each other, away from each other. So you can set up a competition. And guess what? If you do that, then you're holding each other accountable for studying, right? So that's an app that you can use. You said it was MTEL. M-T-E-L, because that was the Massachusetts test. That's what that used to be called. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a turquoise color, and it just says M-T-E-L on it. Okay. Okay? Those two uh, <coughs> study guides, for a better word, are the things that my students use. Go Math, MTEL. Those are the only two they said that have benefited them. Now, there's some other books out there that cost you $50.00. They have flashcards that some of these books have made that cost $50. Don't waste your money. Use those two things. That means you're investing $4.99 in studying material. Wow. Okay? Aren't you glad you came today? Yes. I hope so. 
We're glad we got it. We're glad we got it. We're getting ready to leave. All right. So how do you prepare for the open-ended response? Because remember what I told you about the open-ended. Six, 12, 18, 24. Six points if you get a one, 12 points if you get a two, 18 if you get a three, and 24 if you get a four. Imagine 24 points. When my students usually miss between two and four points, they're off by from two to four points. Right? So those open-ended are quite critical. You can pass the test with getting a one, but that means you have to get a lot more questions. Okay? Extra insurance. That's right, extra insurance. So. Practice explaining your key concepts using vocabulary. Now, how do you know the vocabulary to use? Because you studied it from the Go Math, right? Uh -huh. You know the terms they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you say, I'm going to put these two blends together, I'm going to give them the SH sound. They're not looking for SH sound. What is that SH sound called? What is the term, the label for that? They're looking to see if you understand the vocabulary and you know the vocabulary. They don't care so much about the way it. you write it. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. But they care about the fact of whether or not you're using the vocabulary. And you'll see in an open-ended that we're going to practice today. <coughs> Identify what the question is. Look at what they're asking in regards to the learning. What is really going on? What are they really asking for? When you write your open-ended, the first thing you do, your first sentence, is nothing but restating the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right? So look at the question, restate it. If it has two parts, try to put it together in one sentence. Yes. That will remind you that I need to write about this, and I need to write about this. And some people only address the first question and leave out the second question. If you do that, you're going to stay at a one. If you address both of them, quite likely you're going to be at a two. If you just do them halfway. Okay. Number three, after you've written it, guys, double check and make sure you included all the parts. Go back and look at those questions or that question and see what, what did they ask me? Did I address this? Check. Yes. Did I address this? Yes. Check. Did I address this? Yes. Check. Make sure you've addressed all the parts. And then time yourself. So when you're practicing, time yourself. If you're going to do some practice open-ended, give yourself about 20 minutes. Okay? Because that gives you five minutes to read it over. And remember what I told you. <coughs> if you don't what? Submit, mm -hmm. you no. automatically receive a one. So you cannot work until the timer runs out because they do not receive your answer. You must hit the submit button on your open ended. Okay? Critical. You must hit, hit the submit. Can you imagine working 20 minutes? No. You have this great answer that you've created, and then the timer runs out. And you know you're going to get a one. Okay? You must submit that answer. Critical. All right. We're going to practice this, I promise you. Now, this is a key to scoring high. All right? It's called the good, the bad, and the ugly. It definitely relates to the reading, it definitely relates to the math, and it can relate to the open-ending, open-ended in uh, multi-subject, depending on what that question is, all right? So, the first thing you need to do is analyze the student's work. Most of the time, in your open-ended, it probably didn't ask you to look at somebody's work, because it asked you to compare something with that, right? So, the multi-subject probably doesn't normally, although I know one time it did, but... The questions are different, okay? But definitely for the reading and the math, they're going to show you a student's work and they're going to ask you some questions about it, okay? So the first thing you need to do is analyze the student's work. And what I mean by that is identify their strengths and their weaknesses. So you can say, based on this student's work, it's obviously obvious that they understood that opposite angles are congruent. Okay, you notice I didn't say opposite angles are equal. I use congruent. Why? It's a math term. You're looking for the vocabulary. It means the same thing, but I'm going to get more credit for using the word congruent than I am for equal. Okay? So try to use those terms if you can. So I can say, based on the student's work, it's evident that they understand opposite angles are congruent. But maybe they don't understand that angles next to each other are what? If it's a straight... Angle, you know what these two Supple should equal? Supplementary. 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 Okay. And equal 180 degrees. Because maybe they had to solve for this missing angle, 
And maybe they looked at it as complimentary and it was only 90 instead, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, because I don't have a problem in front of me. But I'm just saying, we're going to look at, try to find where they made their mistake. So we're going to point out their strengths as far as what we can tell they understand. And then we're going to point out their weaknesses. That's key, all right? You're going to make a four if you do all this, by the way. If you do it well and you use your vocabulary. All right, the second part is you have to solve the problem yourself. You have to tell them how it would be right. So if it is, sometimes you are evaluating a student's running record and there's a mistake that the teacher has made in that. You're going to have to identify where the mistake was. And then you have to tell them how it's done correctly. In the math, you have to solve it. You have to solve the problem. Doesn't matter how you solve it, but you have to solve it and come up with the right answer. That's why that scan sheet for math is important because you might be doing some work on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. They want to see your stuff, okay? Once you solved it correctly, this is what's always left out. You need to point out alternative strategies and methods that you would use to teach a child. So you're going to look at this kid's weaknesses, and you're going to say, based on their weaknesses, I would teach them how to do it like this. And you point out a new way to teach them, a new way of thinking. That's a four. <coughs> if you do all those things. Most people might identify their weaknesses. Some might solve the problem, but they don't do all of those things. So it's called the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right? The good, the bad, and the ugly. The ugly is, oh gosh, I've got to get all these things together. The ugly is for you. The good is what the kids did that was good. The bad is what the kids did or where they had their weaknesses. And the ugly is, how can I solve it? And how can I teach them how to do it? is the teacher's work. <laughs> That's right. The ugly is the teacher's work. But you can do it, and you know you can. Okay? All right? So if you think like this, when you address those open-endeds, except the general curriculum, it's going to be different. It doesn't really ask you how you teach kids that, does it? It's kind of pretty rough. It is. All right. Just know those bold words, guys. Talk about it a little bit. Talk about whatever you know about it. Okay? <clears throat> All right. You have this? Good, the bad, and the ugly. Just remember, open-ended, good, the bad, and the ugly. What's the good? The strengths. Strength. The strengths. What's the bad? Weaknesses. What's the ugly? Power to change. What the teacher does. But don't forget to solve it first. Okay. You've got to solve it first, okay? The good, the bad, and the ugly. All right. Are you ready to practice? Why not? Okay. I have given you a practice test in front of you. You, now, don't start yet. While you're taking this test, I'm going to be putting some other materials in front of you. Don't worry about those, okay? You will have 10 minutes to complete this practice test. Please keep your eyes on your own paper. Do not talk to your neighbors about this. All right, right now, we want to know what you know. All right, you may begin. Oh, no. this and then you're flipping them but I actually prepared these two different ways so you notice the amendment is also written on this side as well yeah so some of you who are studying for the first time had them all turned over this way because the number was there and as you were learning them you were flipping them over some of you were talking and reading it out loud I could hear your voice some of you are visualizing in the air sort of like you were seeing the car <laughs> but y'all are different and that's okay because we all do it differently, okay? Some of you were writing notes down in your paper as you were reading it, and that's what I need to do. I'm a tactile learner, so I need to write. I need to write a lot, so I write things over and over. I look at it, but then I have to write it, and then it becomes um, permanent in my memory, okay? So whatever works for us is what we need to use, okay? But what I'm trying to show you is, guys, you only studied for 10 minutes and look at more than you. Now, I could give you the answers to this, and I can if you want me to, but you have all the answers on your flashcards right there, so you can check your own. So then we'll save a little bit of time like that, okay? But I don't want you to do it now, all right? I want you to do it after you leave me. So 
There's no excuse for you not to know the amendments, right? Because now you have the flashcards. And as I was uh, looking at the numbers, our calendar is number 1 through 30, so you can practice using the calendar. Exactly, that's right. Each day, right? Uh huh. That's a great idea. Okay? So, but look, don't just study those. I just did that for you. You study all of them that I gave you because I don't know which ones they may ask you about. And so I don't want you to say, gosh, Ms. Bickley said don't do these, and this one was on there. No, no, no. Okay, so you have cards for all of them. Guys, this quiz, the reason I chose this is because this is a quiz that I made off of Quizlet. Mm -hmm. And that's a website that's on the information that I've given you, okay? So that's one strategy of studying. Make your flashcards, do your thing, all right? And even though you have flashcards, everybody used them differently, okay? Now, I made these on the computer. So you could do it on the computer if you wanted to, type it and print it, or you can write them, whatever works for you. Again, we are going to do this, so we need to make sure we are studying in a way that we learn best. So now I'm going to teach you another strategy. I put a paper in front of you that looks like this. It has some of the reading terms. That is not all of the reading terms. So this is what I'd like you to do with this. If you know it, like you know you know it, 100%. You don't have to study that word. You absolutely know it. Just leave it, okay? If you know some about it, but not too much, then put a minus sign beside it. If you have absolutely no clue, circle it, all right? I'm just going to give you a couple minutes to start because this is just a strategy to use. So go ahead and start down that list. Remember, if you know it, what are you going to do with it? <coughs> Leave it alone. Completely know it? Leave it alone. Don't do anything with it. If you know some about it but not too much, what are you going to do? Minus. A minus yeah. sign. If you have no clue, circle, circle. circle it. All right, so go for it. I just wanted you to experience this because this is another way in which you can prepare to study. So you can take all of those terms that are online, and guess what? You can just screenshot that page and copy it in a Word doc and then print it, right? So you don't have to type every one of those words on your own. Save you time. And then do this. And once you've done this, what are you going to do with those words that are circled? So make sure you study them, right? Study. So you've got a few little extra white cards with you right now. I want you to find three of those words that you circled, and I want you to write them on that card because you know you're going to have to go back and... Make some note cards, right? Okay. All right, did all of you evaluate your work? Yes. Do you see where you think you might be? <laughs> didn't get to that one. didn't get to that one, so that would be a problem because yeah, we ran that out of time, right? Primarily in language. Okay. English. All right, so here is a four. I'm going to read you a four, okay? There, well, first of all, let's see what the questions ask so we can make sure we're addressing the questions. The first thing it asked us to do was what? All right, so what's the key in that question? Two ways. Two, two ways. ways. Not one way, two. but two ways. Okay? So you could start this out by saying two ways a plant is pollinated would be, right? Something like that. Does that remind you I need to do two ways and not one way? Okay? And what's the second part of it? All right, explain how the genetic material moves from one to the other to uh, create offspring for plants, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we know one key term, don't we? What is it? Offspring. Pollination. Pollination Genetic or pollen, all right? Pollen. If we talk about that <coughs> word, that's good, okay? Because that has to be there. If we talk about the piston and the style, some of us don't know what that is, right? Oh. But we're still gonna do okay. But I promise you're gonna get higher if you know what the piston and the style are. Because those are the, um, Parts of the plant. The parts of the plant. The male and female yeah, parts of the plant. So that the pollination can occur. But guess what? You can score a three without knowing, not knowing those two terms. Okay? So here's a four. There are various ways that flowering plants are pollinated. One way is by the wind blowing pollen from one plant to another of the same species. It has to be the same, right? Okay. The pollen a plant produces is microscopic and extremely light, so even the slightest breeze can distribute it from one plant to another. So how is it moving? The wind. By wind. Okay? Now guess what? They've told us about one way, right? I'm all ready to hear. Oh, wow. So you think just a couple sentences. if it asks us two ways, you think we should give one way, elaborate, and then give the other way and elaborate? I would give one way and a little example, and then give the second way and a little example. Uh-huh. All right, here's the rest. The ease 
of movement plus the large quantity of pollen each flower produces, and they put thousands of grains in parentheses. You can put that or not, okay? But it obviously helps. Means that the chances of wind pollination are very high. All right, now I'm right here. So all of this, almost half of it, talks about one way the plant was pollinated. Now let me ask you something, guys. Were there any real true scientific terms in there? Mm -hmm. No. They just were describing how it happens in layman's terms. This is a four. <laughs> okay? But they described it well. Could you visualize it? Yes. Could you see that happening and see that plant being pollinated? Yes. All right, so when you write your response, you visualize it. Can I see this happening? Does this make sense? Did I leave out a pertinent step? <clears throat> All right, did I get from one thing to another without the middle? Ask yourself those questions. If you did, go back and fix it, okay? So make a mind movie as you're writing it. Go back and read it and make sure you can visualize what's going on. All right, so here's the second one. This Another way pollination can happen is from bees butterflies, and other insects traveling from flower to flower to suck the nectar from the plant. When insects land on the flower and go after the nectar, they might accidentally rub their legs or antenna against the part of the flower that contains pollen. Now, in parentheses, this person wrote anther, which is where the pollen is. So they're going to be on the four level because they knew that term. Even if you don't know the term, you're still describing what's going on, and you're still going to get points for that, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you know the term, put it in there. If you don't, don't worry about it, but keep describing it so the movie is clear in your mind. All right? So the pollen is sticking to them, and then they may accidentally rub that pollen off onto the next flower they visit. These are examples of cross-pollination. Okay, guys, I'm all the way down here now. So all of this answered the first part. Two-thirds of my paper answer the first part, mm -hmm. all right? When a, grain, when a grain of pollen from one flower lands on another of the same species, now that's twice they talked about the same species, mm -hmm. because we want to know how pollination occurs. So if that bee flies from one flower to another kind of flower, is pollination going to occur? Mm -hmm. No. That's why the student is talking about that more than once. They're pointing that out. Mm -hmm either from the wind or from insect activity. So they just restated the two ways in which they explained, right? Mm -hmm. Wind and insect activity. It must land on the pistil for fertilization to take place. Wow. Pollen contains the male information that has to get into the eggs inside the pistil. The pollen only contains half of the genetic material. Now you know that even if you didn't know the pistil, right? from its parent plant, and the eggs only the other half of the genetic material from the parent plant. When they merge the offspring, now see this person doesn't know what the female part's called. They only know the male part. But they're still talking about that the female part has the eggs, and you need the part from the male plant to, okay? They don't know all the terms. So when they merge the offspring, usually seeds, they have a genetic makeup that's half from the male pollen and half from the female eggs. That's it. And that's a four. Because they have hit everything. If you look at that rubric, that they've, hit, <coughs> they've hit everything that they need to hit. There's a purpose. What's the purpose? What did they ask them to do? What's the purpose um, of this describe question? The, describe two ways. How it's how it's how and how to make how. And did they do both of those things? Yeah. Yes. All right. Did they know their subject matter? Yeah. Yes, yes, they did. Okay, so I'm at the two now, right? Did they know their subject matter? Yes. Yes. How do you know they did? Because they named the plants for what they were. Evidence. They gave evidence. They, they gave named a couple. Of, they only knew two parts. Yeah. The, right? the anther or whatever. But the they used some thing, vocabulary right? that was but specific. But they did use vocabulary that was specific. They used pollination. They and talked about the fact cross-pollination and that it had to happen within the same species. Yes. Yeah. Right? I that's that. just, all that stuff is common knowledge. Now, anther and pistil and stamen, those are not common knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But you could have written the same thing without it and you would at least have gotten a three mm -hmm. because you were talking about about the uh, vocabulary that they asked here, okay? So they had supporting um, knowledge, I mean, supporting material related to the knowledge. All right, was there support, more support? Like, could you really visualize what was going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm at a three. Did they have a rationale? Did they explain what was happening? Mm -hmm. And in their last sentence, they explained it, right? Because we have parts from the male and the female plant, we now create seeds, basically. Yeah. So it 
it's not that hard to get a four. For some reason, sometimes we think about getting a four, we think about long length, right? All right, the last thing I'm going to do today is show you some of those websites that I have on that paper. And they're actually on the last, second to my last slide right here. So it looks like this, okay? Now, I've clicked on some of these to open them up and show you. So the first one is the MTEL practice quiz. This one is free. And that's the Deborah, whatever that last name is. And if it's not on that paper in front of you, then it's definitely on my, do you see that, this website that starts Deborah? Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's what this is. So this is free, online tests. You click it based on the number of questions you'd like to use and subject as well. That one's not on free. Okay. It's on here. It's, it's on, on there. there. Yeah. It's on there. Yeah. It's in the middle. Got it. Okay. Starts Deborah. All right. Here's another one. This is um, testpreppractice.net. Is that one on your paper? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so here's this one. It's going to explain a little bit, but you can click on these to get test prep stuff. Okay? So there's some explanations about it and then some practice. Here's some more practice tests down here if you scroll down to the bottom. All right, here's another one. This is the one that I was telling you about that you do a practice test first. These quizzes are really good on this one. And this one is the one that you pay based on the number of tests that you want to do. Okay? So they ask you to do a practice test first. And then once you do, this is mtelexamprep.com. Is that on there? Yeah, mm -hmm. right under the Deborah. Okay. All right, it's right under the Deborah. And remember, the most important part, guys, is reading the answer key after the fact, right? Yes. Because that's where you find out what you know. And you always read those that you got correct and incorrect. Don't skip the ones you got correct, because you may have just gotten them correct by guessing. So don't do that. So here's your free sample test first, and then it asks you how many tests, you have to fill that in, how many tests you want to do after the fact, after you do that practice test. So do the little sample test first, and then you decide how many, and it's up to you, okay? Um... No, I don't want that. I want this. Okay, this is a flashcard site, and that's on there as well. Uh, www.cram.com. Mm -hmm. So this, now these are electronic flashcards, so you can do this <coughs> online. So if I want to work on Intel Science, here's my flashcards. You can even print them if you'd like. So it kind of makes them for you. Okay. So these are just some of the sites that I provided on that paper for you and uh, as well um, on this slide right here. So it's the second to the last slide. That way you can just click on them or copy and paste them instead of trying to. Some of these have quite long um, websites, so you might make a mistake in typing it. All right, so lots of these are practice materials for you. There's that MTEL app that I told you about for your phone. All right, now. What questions do you have of me? Was this helpful today? Yes. yes. Thank you. Good.